Hey everybody and welcome on back to Building with Whip. Today is the second part of the world tour here with Wells Knight. We're taking a look through the single player world. So welcome on back guys. We are picking up exactly where we left off from the last episode where we toured around the desert city, the old village remake of White Glen, as well as looking at the crazy custom train that we got going on here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. If you missed it, be sure to go check that out. But yeah, with that, let's go ahead and get into the rest of it. So, you know, for this one, it's a little bit crazy in there, so I'll go ahead and let you lead the lead the way through the gates here, and you can just kind of let me know what you're thinking about it. This is uh this is the probably the craziest project I've taken on after you've seen the mountains. It's a it's a okay. little much, <laughs> but not a whole lot in here. But yeah, I probably should have waited till we got up to the harbor <laughs> itself. Yeah, look at this giant crazy project. There's nothing. I was gonna say, wow, <laughs> the, the grass blocks so much I know, grass. They're, they're so pretty. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so it's a general idea of making a city here completely kind of redoing the custom terrain itself of mm -hmm. having the whole atmosphere up into this area. So giant harbor docks area right here where a lot of the planes biome actually extended out kind of to where that end of that big stone pier is. A lot okay. of the planes actually extended out to there. So cave that stuff all down and brought the water in. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, but yeah, so a lot of that stuff in there. And then what I've been working on currently over the last 10 to 15 episodes has really been the city throughout this area. So this place is called Port Latour, which is kind of like a port by the coast or city on the coast, more or less, is what I'm going for here. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a Latin, Latin, maybe translation. Not too sure on that one. Uh, but yeah, Sounds so we got French to me. Yeah, somebody in the Discord was like, I think it's Latin. I don't know. I'll have to <laughs> go have check to on that. I'd have to see the spelling of it, but yeah, definitely. But anyway. I'm not a word person. I work with computers all day. <laughs> so we got a big old like storage room in here. This is supposed to be like a confiscated goods storage room area. Just kind of bringing in that whole feel of uh, the building next to us is actually a big old yeah, upstairs. Still got to do that one. But the building next to us is like a guard outpost for like the guards who are watching the harbor area. So not cool. okay. So like right over here, we got this big guard outpost. This one I actually did do an interior on. So you kind of open it up into here. Got some cool little open spaces for like the guards to sit down and eat and do all their cool stuff. Uh, just hanging out, doing the guardy thing. Um, little sergeant's office or something like that. The guard captain has this kind of map that he's laying out the plans for rotations or patrols or whatever. Uh, down in the basement area, I figured I had to throw some cells down here for people who were put into jail overnight. Things like that. Just kind of having different places. Oh. There you go. <laughs> just being able to kind of have that. And then they can also like barely look outside and kind of see the see the outsides of and maybe get some of the runoff in the road down here. Just trying to make it look like super gross down here was the gotcha. the main goal with it. <laughs> so it's really. Yeah, both are kind of just the same down there. Not a whole lot of variation to them. Uh, there's a upstairs area in here with like a little bedroom area for all the guards to sleep in for everybody in here. All the bunk bed style, just give them a little bit of space to kind of live and do their own thing. And then the continuation of the tower back there, which is some extra storage area and maybe one more recruit can live back in there or something like that. Okay. But yeah, so just kind of guard shack area down here. Uh, not a whole lot of the interiors are done throughout this area. More really trying to focus on adding a lot of depth through the exterior and really kind of just creating a lot of cool atmosphere when you're walking up and down the city streets and everything like that. So over here, this is supposed to be like a dock master's house. I'll kind of get back to that uh, later. We got a cool cart here. Oops, breaking the wheel. Uh, got a cart in this area and then a big inn kind of behind it, just some general like ale house or something like that. Uh, eventually it's going to be going through there. Hopefully it will turn out pretty cool on the inside. I'm kind of waiting for 1.14 for all the interiors for these guys. Uh, this one's probably one of my more favorite houses here. I tried using the Acacia strip log up at the top. Uh, in my texture pack, I made it a little bit more of like a burnt red color. So it wasn't quite as bright and really colorful as the original Acacia Logs. I think it works a little bit better for the city, but overall feel it just kind of started from here with the city working at this general area. Uh, and I want to include like a lot of like these overhang areas that aren't really gateways, but kind of just shadow your view. So you have to kind of walk through them to have that grand reveal of whatever is behind it. Um, just, I feel like that can help add a lot to the general life of the city, just kind of adding those over the top areas. Uh, big old like trade boat down here. Um, which a lot of people told me that if you're ever going to make a trade boat, there's not going to be all these windows on the side because that be, would be where cannons are going to go out from. So, you know, <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> learned, learned that one after the fact. And this, it was like my first or second attempt at building a boat. So <laughs> pretty happy with how that one turned out. Just kind of 
working with the shapes of it a lot. That thing took forever, though. That's probably the longest part out of building this entire world was making sure I could get that boat working and looking right. <laughs> yeah, I built a couple of ships as well, and the, getting the, the shape is like mm -hmm. the hardest part for sure. Yeah, uh, so one cool thing down here, just kind of going with the update aquatic type stuff, I want to like revamp the whole underwater area down so here. So really, I need to cave away a lot of this terrain down at the base and make it look all interesting and stuff. But I really want to kind of add that really lifelike, just all that life, kind of all these fishes floating around, right? Or swimming around right next to the docks and everything, waiting for people to drop food off the edge and all that stuff. So I'm working on catching a bunch of fish from all over the world and bringing them into the area because... This is a plane, planes biome, so they don't actually spawn in here. <laughs> so I got to bring them all in. <laughs> but yeah, so that's a lot of the general front for the port area. Uh, one of my favorite parts about this actually is right over in this area, this kind of main street area right here that I'm, I've been working on a lot recently. And I, I love the idea of kind of working on streets that really flow going upwards, which is why I'm adding a lot of height to this area. So kind of as you walk through this, you get a lot of just things popping out on the sides and everything like that. Just a lot of color. I'm trying to add like a lot of bushes and just different colored flowers and just life and just making the city feel super green and lifelike and a lot of little areas for plants along the sides, trees and fit in everything I possibly can in here. Well, also my goal is to somehow use every single block that isn't like a like highlighter color within the city in some way or another just trying to add it so maybe not like the magenta concrete or something like that but for the rest of them i want to try and see if i can't somehow include them in here and create like really lifelike stuff like i turned the end stone in my texture pack to more look like a cobblestone and it actually turned out really well on the this shop right in here that you're looking at so just kind of yeah that's definitely Ooh. a better color for end stone I, I felt like it just makes it more usable. I haven't changed endstone brick yet, so that's still kind of that old gross color. But overall, I don't know. I thought it contrasts pretty well to the dark oak roof and gave a lot of cool atmosphere to it. Uh, beyond that, back over in the street area, there's a cool alleyway back here that I've been working on. So all these houses are actually this one is the one that is literally finished up in the last building episode. So down here, just create a little alleyway with like a back street park area or something like that. And just general cool stuff back here for people to kind of explore and go all over the place and really just trying to make it look like there's a lot of life in here. Um, got a little blacksmith area in here. I actually, I ended up installing that statues data pack you guys use on Hermitcraft. Uh, to mm, try the, uh, sure, sure, for the, uh, the armor stands. Yeah, so I tried to make it look like there's like an iron sword or something floating here in the water, just trying to add a little bit more life throughout the area without really overdoing it. Um, mm -hmm. not doing the whole like magic battle scenes that you guys have going on, but I tried getting a little bit of tiny things here and there, like just a little sword floating around. So you might catch a few of those as we're kind of looking around the place, but just lots of cool stuff throughout here. Really? Whoa, what was that? I just had a really weird sound in the background for Minecraft. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. But anyway, I tried <laughs> bringing in some like dead coral through. It <laughs> really threw me off right there. I uh, was trying to bring in like dead coral and use that as like a building block here. It's like a stone variant. Um, sure. Haven't really figured out quite how I want to master that one yet. But that's a lot of what the city is in this area. Just kind of really working on growing it. It's not too massive per se yet, but there's a lot of built into these small little areas. Another one of the armor stand usages, I made a little fish shop right here so you can kind of see them just sitting there in the in the ice buckets or something like that i figured i was gotcha I'd... that's really clever the ice of course mm -hmm. fish well, on ice. yeah I, <laughs> i'm a seattle local so i'm always walking through pike place market and i see all the guys like just throwing the fish around and everything like that so i tried to bring a little bit of the the hometown vibe into the into the build here i was like well it's on the coast you might as well have that ready to go here so just kind of added those guys in i thought it was really kind of neat little touch to it um I'm trying to think of what else would be in this area. I think that's pretty much it for the city itself. Um, I know you're a big old fan of... Actually, we got one more stop before that. I'll bring that one up later. Uh, so we can go ahead and just kind of fly on up here along out of the city way. Uh, walk for a little bit. You can kind of see the general scale of what I'm going here for the city. Uh, so it's actually going to expand out across this entire plains biome. This cutout channel you're seeing right here is going to be a, like a canal way area. And then the dirt mm -hmm. that you're seeing that's removed right along here, that's actually going to go all the way out. And that connects up to like a major ocean out on that front. So this is kind of the inner bay area. So smaller boats uh, that'll be able to fit through like this little channel area that we'll get to here in a little bit. Um, but that'll be kind of the big gin, like giant ocean port area for some really, really mega ships. So 
when like in three years down the road when I actually get the city built at to that <laughs> that wide. Uh, but a lot of cool stuff going on through here. This is just kind of a pathway leading through the woods. Um, and then up here off to the right side, I tried making like a really hidden village back here, really kind of inspired by like Robin Hood or something like that. Kind of that general idea of like the the village hidden in the forest, basically. Mm -hmm. So you kind of come out in this area, really closed in village here. They have like a little mine or something to supply themselves with their own goods and just really kind of closed in, nestled in area. I tried to make it look like there's like a festival going on with all these banners, things like that all the way around here. And then just kind of adding a bunch of life in here. This was actually like a major extreme project that I did a little while ago, just kind of working with everybody through that. So it's really fun kind of doing a project, working with everybody and, and building it from nothing instead of just kind of going, jumping on there every once in a while. So I'm going to try and do more stuff like this moving forwards. But like through this area over here, uh, I tried making it look like they like building on that Robin Hood lore of like they're trying to defend themselves against like some ruling power in the city. Uh, so they've been like training themselves underneath the tree canopy for like archery skills and things like that. So there's a little bow archery range back here, which I thought was like a cool little touch. But I sadly for like the scale, I want to take the city. I might have to like push these guys out a little ways or they'll be like just barely hidden off into the in to the woods behind the wall. So that'll be something I'll have to <laughs> look into more in the future. But this is kind of the cool little tiny build throughout the area that I thought was just kind of fun to add to and add a bunch of extra life into the world here. Yeah, it's a nice detail for sure. Like, and and the the use of all the leaves up above, like the canopy, kind of is what ties it all together. I think. Yeah, I always try when I'm working with these. I know this would be a little cheaty and outside the Minecraft vibe, but I always try and when I'm making trees, when I when I think I've finished it, I turn on shaders that have like really strong god rays, and I walk underneath the tree and trying to see if I can at least see some god rays poking through. Because I figure like if I'm walking around and like outside in the real life, when we occasionally ever do that. Uh, you always see like so many just like lights, like just little like beams of light coming through the trees when you're looking from underneath them. So I try and always have that kind of atmosphere going in here. When you're looking up, you can always kind of somewhat see the lights. So that's why you see like kind of the tree canopies I have here are pretty thin compared to like the Minecraft trees where it's just kind of filling them leaf blocks all the way. I try and make them look a little bit more airy so you can get little bits of those lights and sky kind of peering through it. No, no, just kind of uh, effect that I like to use to <laughs> make things a little bit more unique to the world cool i like it i like it a lot yeah so this this village right here not quite too sure what i want to be doing with it but it kind of is just in the pathway right now for where we can get into future uh builds and things like that i don't know i might try and figure out a way of resetting this one as some of the houses look like they did get reset in half when i updated 113 um <laughs> but yeah, so we'll see when those new villagers come in here, what ends up happening with all those guys. But this way kind of leads out to one of the major projects that I'm super happy of. And I think you'll enjoy this one a lot. I think I might have actually sent you a picture of it on Twitter <laughs> many, many moons ago of what it is. But it's a, the big old castle I've been working on over the past while. Uh, pretty much filled, like finished up the exterior of it and a little farming village outside like the general area of it with like a little fishing port and things like that because it's on the ocean. Uh, it's kind of protecting the channel I was talking about earlier for how the ships would get into like the inner bay for the city. Uh, so trying to bring the world full circle and have everything really connected up here. But it's just up here around the corner just a little bit further. I'm trying to. Yeah, perfect. So it's right up here. Uh, this one is pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> kind of blew Jancy's mind when he and I were walking through here together, going through all of this stuff. Uh, so one thing I love playing with is sight lines. So I really built mm -hmm. this world so that you're walking along the floor, kind of what we were talking about earlier, where you really want to kind of experience the world from walking through it, not really flying or anything like that. So this in here is you'll kind of see the castle loading up in the distance and the inn I kind of placed here just to really mess with people when they're walking through and they'd be like, wait, that thing looks so cool, but I have to get around this building to be able to see it. So I really kind of sprints around it to get that kind of final view poking out behind of the whole castle and everything like that as it finishes loading in here. Um, but yeah, this is probably one of my more favorite ones called Castle Bleak Rock. Um, trying to just create a really cool custom castle environment, really trying to make everything look super kind of natural, but really, really fantasy vibe-esque. So super proud of this guy, though. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah. Is this, what do we got? Red concrete and red terracotta. Yeah, I figured I'd, I wanted to use red concrete mostly, but I wanted some of it just to have a little slight tone difference to it. So I figured the red terracotta was a little bit less saturated version of it just to help give it that extra bit of detail and 
just extra life to it. And then my acacia is a little bit more on the redder side uh, than the other ones. Are, then the basic is a little bit more orangey. So kind of mm -hmm. helping bring in another roof type in here or a roof coloring as well beyond just the dark oak and then the two red guys. But this one, I personally, I think like looking back here when you get like the fishing village and everything like that and like effect with it, you get like the whole atmosphere of it. Uh, very, very cool to see kind of looking at it, all of it. We can go check it out here and walk through it here in a little bit. Um, but so we got the fishing village out here, just a little fishing boat kind of made up here real quick, making it look like it's that dock unloading all the fish, basically prismarine and barrels. <laughs> but yep. trying to add up just a bunch of atmosphere. Oh, I'll grab it. that guy. Clear. If I can spell right. Cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so fishing village down here kind of, I figured these guys would be people who settled in here more recently to when the castle was built. So it's kind of people who came in after the castle was in here. And then these stone houses up on the on the ledge here are more the people that take care of the farming and everything like that. So they're like ancient people that have lived in the region for a really, really long time. Uh, and then they're so they kind of still have their little home in here and they mend like all the fields for the castle and everything. Um, but then like the fishing villagers, everybody who's just kind of popped up here and wanted to live next to the castle for like all the trade and everything. But we can actually go walk into the castle here and kind of see what's going on with this guy. Uh, there's most of the inside when you're looking at it before you open up any of the doorways is pretty much complete more or less um, as far as building style and everything like that. So in here is meant to be like a big old stables. Eventually I get kind of finishing those guys up uh, with adding in extra little bits of detail down over in this area kind of opens up into an area where we got a little bit of a catapult set up here on the cliff area itself so it could fire out at attacking ships. Or That's really like cool. That. Actually, I really like that catapult design. Yeah, it, I, I was like, how I tried. So I went through like six or seven designs before I, before I was able to find something that would fit in this small of a space. And then I tried making those like grooves with the stairs in the floor to make it look like it could spin and rotate. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, no, realistically, like this thing at the end here would just like hit everything when it's moving around. So I, I figured it, it looks good right there and it'll it'll stay right there. <laughs> yeah, it works. I like it a lot. That's mm -hmm. it is really hard to do something very detailed on a scale like this. This is not very big. Yeah, <laughs> like this is what probably like seven by nine, maybe. Seven by eleven? Yeah, probably like that. Nine nine or ten, yes. Small. Like that's <laughs> that's a pretty small space to work in a lot of detail, but I think you uh you accomplished it with the capital for sure. <laughs> I like it. Awesome. Well, so down here this is supposed to be like a this is supposed to be like the dog kennels area right here, something like that. And then down into this way is leads down to like a jail area that's not quite done yet, but just general idea of I figured took this one from Game of Thrones of the jail can be underneath where all the dogs live and everything like that. So it's just going to cut out here for where eventually like some prisoners or something like that when the castle could be. So just working out yeah, the okay. general ideas for all this. Got to come back and <laughs> fix up the rest of the area to see kind of what's going on with finishing it all up. But for the most part, I'm really happy with kind of the progress this one's at right here. Uh, this front area right here is just kind of meant to look really fancy schmancy and all super nice and everything I'm trying to make some like stained glass up here at the top with that glazed terracotta i kind of wish we had like another way of making like see-through glass textures without like just the stained glass because or like the colored glass i know it would work in here but i feel like it didn't have enough detail for kind of what it's going with so i defaulted to going with that stuff and i think it kind of fit the purpose more or less <laughs> looking from the outside it did at least but yeah from down here mm-hmm if yeah, you use your imagination a little bit. Yeah, I can <laughs> yeah. see it. Yeah, figure, figure it's Minecraft. Can throw a little imagination in here. <laughs> mm -hmm. But over into this area, got a cool little blacksmith area here as well. Um, trying to make that like double front forge area. Originally, I just had it open on the inside, and somebody uh, was yelling at me about how it'd get so hot in here that nobody would want to work in here. So I was like, well, let's just open it up to both sides, and then problem solved. So we can be stoking the fire and working on both sides, and the heat can kind of go out in more way than just one. So there you go. that's kind of cool to just add all that stuff in, just extra storage and things like that. Uh, coming through the second gateway here, figured just more protection and defenses and also to make it look pretty cool. Uh, this is actually like a big mess hall area in here. It's kind of a pain to go through the doors. Um, but yeah, so big old mess hall thing in here. I've been meaning to come back in and rework it now that I have kind of the statues thing. I can add in a lot more food types and make it look a lot more interesting and add in some extra bits of detail and just general life to this. Uh, probably the outside of this guy. I don't know if, how good of a look you got of it, but if you look at it from the opposite side, 
Uh, so from the outside, kind of down here along the water area, probably one of my favorite views of the whole castle is just kind of this detailed front face right here. Mm -hmm. um, what I what I really try and do here on the castle is make everything like all the walls are too thick, just to be able to cut into it and add that extra bit of detail and then kind of slope it out. And I figure as the castle walls would go down for extra fortification strength and everything, they kind of like pump them out just a, a little bit farther. So that's kind of what's sloping out as it goes down. Um, these chests are still here from the last world tour. I have not cleared those out yet. <laughs> last time I was definitely like, oh, I'll have to come back and get these after tour. No, that definitely didn't happen. Um, got a big old custom cliff face back here. Just trying to add extra detail to it. So this is the uh, like channel area for the boats to get in and out of that inner sea. This is actually the only entrance to it. Everything else is kind of landlocked leading out to the giant ocean. Um, mm -hmm. So I tried to add in like some like seabirds would be nesting along these cliffs and everything. So there's a few hay bales hidden in be like birds nests or something like that. I uh, just trying to get extra little bits of detail throughout here. Really? I tried messing with the powdered concrete just to have some different stone variety and everything like that throughout this whole place. That gave kind of a cool light in cliff area. Cause I, the, I was starting to go off the name like bleak rock. So like really whitewashed cliffs and everything like that make the castle look super light colored using a lot of that like lighter stone diorite that I have built in here. Um, mm -hmm. So give it a lot of atmosphere through all that stuff. And then there's one last little section here for the castle. Uh, jumping down in this last little center area in here. Uh, yeah, so right there. Yeah, so he comes kind of up through this last doorway. Got another stained glass window in here. That would lead into like the big old palace throne room area. Nothing in there is quite done. There's no floor, so watch, oh, watch your step. Beautiful. <laughs> I know. Very, very highly detailed. Looks great. <laughs> Freaking amazing. Um, but yeah, end goals have like the big throne room in here. Have it look super cool and not like this. Uh, I'll probably actually come back to this guy pretty soon. I've been meaning to get back over here and finish some of these things up. Just kind of to fully be able to finish up the project itself. One other cool spot in here. Um, I tried coming up with like a cool bell tower design. Uh, using i turned iron into like a dark iron texture so i was able to use a lot of those things to make more of like a bell i changed the dark iron trap door which you'll see up here in a second uh, now that we're actually getting bells though in the future updates but had nothing to work with so i tried to make this up here just cool little custom bell design going off of everything ah i like it somehow to make it pretty compact and everything i don't know if you can actually make this happen anymore uh you can put a lever in the bottom of it and click that and all the trapdoors would close but there used to be a glitch where if you stood on two pressure plates at once one to activate the trap door and one to move it with a piston the trap door would stay down and activate it not sure if that's still a bug or not i feel like that one was fixed but so you could get them to like lock into these in these just downward positions because iron trap doors don't do that without like the redstone signal so it's kind of Nice little find to be able to make it look a little bit more interesting, but figured there needed to be some sort of a bell tower up here just to add extra detail to the city itself. But yeah, just kind of extra life in there. I think that's mostly it for the castle. There's one more quick thing we can go check on. I decided to, oh, that's the wrong way. I decided to go ahead and do kind of the typical uh, 1.13 thing and make a coral reef uh, so we can run on over here. I uh, worked on a guardian farm quite a while. We've got some dolphins jumping out there in the water. So jumping out here just into the ocean, it's not too far off the shore, luckily. I think it's going to be right out over this. Yeah, it'd be right out beyond here. There you go. All right, cool. Oh, I <laughs> didn't lose you. Yeah, so there's a big old guardian farm in here just kind of doing its thing. But I tried to go, I want to make like a sunken Atlantis type feel to this city or this area in the end. But clearing all the sand and water and everything, that took too long <laughs> so that put feeling. it on the, yeah i'm sure you're pretty aware of that one so if you jump down under here you can see a big old coral reef there's a conduit to make it a little bit brighter for you but try to make a cool custom coral reef area because i love that we got these blocks just for all the color and life and everything like that that they give underwater but i felt like the coral reef that we get through like default it looks nice in everything but i i don't know it didn't look like a traditional coral reef to me so I tried like recreating one something kind of like what you'd see as the Great Barrier Reef or something like that. Uh, so it kind of comes out here into a big old cave base just to kind of have some extra life in this area somewhere for just a, like a starter base or something like that. If you need somewhere quickly to jump in and just explore and kind of live out of an area for a little bit, there's kind of everything set up in here with an enchanting table, storage room and all, all the works in here. Just try to do something kind of fresh to mix uh, just to mix things up when 1.13 came in here. Uh, just kind of adding that extra little life into the world. It was just a cool little ad, I thought. Yeah, that's still something that I need to do is actually like make 
I need to do like something underwater. <laughs> like I haven't really done anything underwater since 1.13. There's a dolphin that's like that was just super interested in you. I don't know if you saw that guy. Every oh, time he's you, following me around, yeah, he was like right behind you the whole time. I was like, "Whoa!" The, the dolphin stalker. Yeah, see, I, I play in single player all the time, so I'm not really super aware of what like dolphins do or anything like because I'm never the, in the water. Uh, seahorse thing over here. So I had all these conduit designs or conduits. I put one on every single corner of the big old guardian farm area oh, so I could eventually add some light back there. So the conduits actually stuck in the middle uh, of it. So I tried to make it look uh, turning I into a statue you. instead of just having something big. Also really glad you thought it was a seahorse because <laughs> not many people saw it as a seahorse when it was first finished. So it's cool to see that <laughs> first looks it actually can be one. <laughs> oh, it totally looks like a seahorse to me. Awesome. Well, that's pretty much everything in the world kind of worth exploring. There's a few things kind of that are I, when I first started, I was like, I'm going to build things in every in specific biome. So I'm going to go find the biome in the first perfect spot that comes to mind. So there's a few things that are like 10,000 blocks away. That would be kind of mm. a pain in the butt to get to and aren't super worth checking out. Um, actually, you know what? Let's we can jump into the nether from here. Uh, if you, you want to go and check that guy out here real quick, I think. Actually, if we come back over here into the coral reef area, we, there's another portal down into here. But that'd be the last kind of guy to check out before we finish this one off. It's just figured I'd show it to you. It's very much kind of still work in progress, uh, but it's a it's a cool little spot to check out. It might give you some ideas moving forward. I tried going with that like foggy glass effect. It's kind of a pain. All right, okay, ah, cool. Another portal. There we go. <laughs> and into the portal we go. There we go. I think it's I think it's this way. Yeah, this this looks good. Yep, over here. Perfect. <laughs> so like I was mentioning uh, in the last episode, I want to make some like well of souls, kind of river of sticks type uh, nether hub feel. So kind of in here, got that general like vibe area in here where there'd be kind of this well of souls. You can't really see it because I don't have connected glass enabled in the texture pack right now. But there's like mm -hmm. a whole like kind of swirly design at the bottom uh, that you see kind of like that childhood Hercules movie or something like that. But this guy over here actually leads to the village itself that we're in. Um, so you kind of see like a rundown version of the village itself. So this is actually part of the church back here that's kind of broken into and the nether portal is like built into that thing itself. So I want to make it look like the nether portal itself is kind of pulling things out of the world into the nether. And then also I was going to eventually do kind of like vice versa. So the nether is kind of pushing out into the real world itself. So this type of biome and everything like that. Um, over here, this is kind of the papyrus one. So I tried piling up a bunch of things. I kind of bring in some more sand into it. And then back down the tunnel down there is kind of the the getting to the end dimension, just going all the way down there. Just This is kind of the only finished, I guess, river you would call it through this area. Um, so the kind of end vibe would be to have kind of all the tunnels looking something like this whole complete environment down here. Cool. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it for the world. So <laughs> hope you enjoyed checking it out. I know there's a heck of a lot to it. So <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. There's tons of really awesome stuff here. Like. I don't know. Lots of uh, how long have you been working on this world? Uh, this world I started back in the 1.12 snapshots. So I think I'm coming up about on a year and a half. This is episode 150 and I've been doing about two to three episodes a week fairly consistently since then. So uh, <laughs> it's been around for a while, but it's uh, it's not it's not young, but it's not super old yet. <laughs> Very cool. And do you put uh, do you put world downloads out for people to like? Yes. They want to go and do the world and all that kind of stuff as well. Yes, definitely should have mentioned that earlier. There will definitely be a world download down in the description. Uh, I can send you the link for it as well if you want to smack it on your video too so people can grab it as well. Feel free to yeah, tour it I around will. it as much as you guys would like to. Uh, always appreciate feedback or if you find any random shulker boxes out there, be sure to let me know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, this was really cool. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for joining, man. Um, thank you, everybody else, for watching. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy this world tour and everything here on it. So, yeah, thank you guys all so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next episode.